This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the best website for building websites. More on that later. Welcome to the first skate park ever built in Los Angeles. Right now we're looking for a hole in the fence so we can get through because apparently it's just completely closed off to the public now. Huh, this feels pretty cool actually. Dude, there's a lot of stuff here. For being the first skate park, it's way more street oriented than I thought it would be. And it does feel like an abandoned place. Like this building right here is completely unoccupied. Same with those. It's pretty cool. I actually really appreciate the variety of ledges you have here. That ledge looks just flawless. And even these obstacles are pretty unique. Right here, you have a legitimate one, two, three, four, five stair with a legitimate handrail, which is terrifying. By the way, this is called Pedlo Skate Park. And I'm so surprised at how many ledges there are. This isn't how traditional skate parks typically are, but they surround the park. So if you want to just wax things and just go around in circles over and over, you can just skate ledges nonstop. It's very cool. And then you have the land of just homemade built obstacles, just random stuff that I guess the locals are trying to put together. It's a little hard to hear me because the music in the background is playing really loudly. So I'll try to just uh, skate for now and then kind of, you know, tell you, tell you how it is as I go. I have filmed everything in 24 frames so far, so every clip has been a bit choppy, but now it's in 60, so we're good. <laughs> this metal doesn't work. Unfortunately, I still have sort of a hip injury from two days ago skating these stairs, and I am I'm very limited in what I can do, but I wanted to talk about the main differences between a park that you might see built in 2001 versus the ones built today. So a good example of a today park is El Serrano, Serino, Serrano. <laughs> that park is very, very, very modern. Everyone loves it today. And there's a lot of differences. So starting off, number one, it's this whole area here, having a ton of room to basically build what you want, to be able to stash wood in the back, this is not something you can see at skate parks today. All this transition, so having extra bowls throughout, even my hometown skate park in Columbia, South Carolina, was very bowl heavy. But I still like it because they don't really go too crazy. This bowl here, the blue one, only goes up to about six or seven feet. That one is definitely a lot bigger in the background, but I think anyone can kind of get used to it. There's like a two foot section, three foot section, four foot section, like all the ramps kind of build up in such a small space. So I would say for a first skate park, this is pretty intuitive. You would not see another ledge built on top of a ledge kind of in this way ever again, even though you can do some fun, creative stuff on this. I actually do plan on skating the other side where it does this, but most skate parks just have ledges on their own. They don't have ledges like stacked on top, making it really confusing. Plus the actual angle iron itself, it's hard to explain, but this type of rounded metal that kind of wedges in like this, I, it's, it's really hard to explain, but like this square coping is not something you typically find at skate parks now. Whatever metal they use today just grinds and slides so good. It's amazing, especially at newer skate parks. Skateboarding has had this weird arc where a lot of things in this park aren't really built like the kind of street ledges you would find. So it's almost like uniquely skate park type obstacles. And then they went very street. So there's a couple skate parks here, like the last one, Richie Valens, the one I skated, that was built to mirror street spots. But then you found people kind of didn't like that either. Now there's just this weird, like super fancy type of skate park being built. They kind of match the street league vibe. It's kind of like our football arena. And then now we just have like mini arenas being built. So it's almost like skate parks now are being built to be good at things like street league in the future, like more competition. So skateboarding is kind of finding their mainstream, you know, arena type atmosphere, which is strange, but very fun for skateboarding, if I'm gonna be honest. Anyways, uh, since I am very, very hurt, I'm gonna skate the bottom area where it is chill. And uh, yeah, maybe you can kind of get an eye on other stuff happening here, because that kid is ripping, but I don't wanna just film a 
it's almost stranger. But yeah, it's cool. And now a quick word from our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace has award-winning templates that you can choose from, so you don't need a design background. And now they have Fluid Engine, which basically means a drag and drop type surface. So it's really, really easy to design your own website. They also have email campaigns, which is perfect for anyone out there who wants to grow an audience that doesn't get altered by the algorithm. Anyone who subscribes to your email list will get your notification every single time. They also have analytics. It tells you how well certain aspects of your website are doing, or if you're selling products, they can show you essentially what does well and what doesn't. And they have blogging. For all the writers out there, of course, if you wanna have your own comment section, like section on your own website, you can basically build your own little social media universe. And I think now what's most exciting is they have custom merch. So they'll actually fulfill your orders for you. So if you've always wanted to start a t-shirt brand, now you just have to come up with a design and Squarespace will literally have a company fulfill that for you. So you don't need to carry the products yourself. It's actually incredibly easy now to start a brand for pretty much anyone. And the last thing I wanna talk about on top of so many other features that I haven't even mentioned is the members area. So if you wanna sell like an exclusive course or something, people can actually go to that and they can order it like they would any other product, you know, $10 to buy a course that you're selling and boom, there you go. If you wanna check it out, you can go to the link in the description down below or go to squarespace.com slash John Hill to get 10% off your first purchase or domain or you can just sign up for free right now and test it out. And then when you're ready, you can sign up. So check it out link down below and thank you Squarespace and enjoy the rest of the video I'm an idiot. I guess it just opens up. The weird thing about California that is kind of unique is there are a lot of skate parks here that open up in the middle of the day and there are people who look after it. So there's like a little area where they sell drinks, etc. And there's someone there just chilling, selling stuff. Most skate parks are just open to the public and they just leave it open and you can skate. Unfortunately, people can come in and vandalize. Maybe that's what they're trying to prevent in California. So it's kind of cool, I guess. I just, sometimes they have rules around them like wearing a helmet. I think you're supposed to wear a helmet here, but no one enforced it, thank goodness. The temperature has risen in California. It is now officially hot. And thank God I'm used to Texas because this is kind of nothing. I mean, even though I'm sweating vigorously and it is very hot, compared to Texas, this is nothing. I hate to be that person on the internet who's like, oh, wait until you're in Texas. But it's the truth. Now that my body's completely adjusted to that and like five months of burning heat, like, a month of you know highs of 93 etc in la yeah it's hot but we actually have a pool at our house too which is really cool uh it's not bad you just kind of skate in the morning and then you work on other stuff for the rest of the day and luckily as youtubers there's enough computer work to last 12 hours a day if you want so that was a fun session. That's the first skate park ever built in LA, which is kind of a crazy feeling inside to be in there and be like, damn, like this started such a legendary trajectory. Legendary, what a weird word to use. But in skateboarding in California, it's just, it's so popular. It's so big. 
and to see the evolution of this thing basically becoming like an official sport at this point, which is insane to me, that's kind of the origin, but it's actually a really good park. Like that beginner first skate park in California built in 19 or 2001, 2006, 2001, is better than most of the skate parks I skate that people build that are brand new. And it, even in LA right now, they're building all these really tiny skate parks. I mean, they're incredibly nice, smooth good parks especially for beginners but they are small and this one's huge and you know i'm sure there's a lot of effort that went into the first grand opening skate park but i really like it and actually does feel very nostalgic it feels very california as well which you know i grew up idolizing the culture of just like graffiti skateboarding surf that whole skate culture that skate life or whatever i'm sure it's very normal in la but for me being in south carolina i was like whoa so now that I get to be here and kind of experience the culture, you know, the beginning all the way to the end where I'm skating with all these amazing skateboarders here, it's been really cool. So I've been having a lot of fun in California. Just wanted to update a little bit on that because I think people are kind of interested in some of the, how I feel as a human. So once in a while, I like to slip that in. But right now, if you do want to keep up with me, you can follow my Instagram or threads. I'll link it down in the description. But my Instagram is where I really, really post like what I'm doing in my life. So there's a lot of skateboarding. There's a lot of making videos. Obviously, I'm uploading three videos a week on this channel, but I'm doing a lot of art as well. And I'm actually trying to kind of navigate my career to be more of a designer in some ways, which is kind of really fun. But I don't want to accidentally cheapen the art by just doing like, oh, I'm just going to make a bunch of merchandise really quickly. So I'm really trying to play this whole future safe with what I do. And even with Progress Daily, which is my brand, I haven't really been interested in kind of pursuing that or the other brand i started studio drippy i don't know why i start brands so right now i'm just focused on me so right now it's just like john hill i'm a designer i'm not a designer for progress daily i'm just a designer just a youtuber just a skateboarder there's one channel one thing to follow like i don't want to like overwhelm anyone and that's kind of how i'm trying to focus it right now so eventually i'll have a website called john hill studio and that'll be the everything that i do as an individual i'm, I'm kind of like not really into just like capturing everything else right now because I need to focus on me and that growth. And I think a lot of people could probably relate to that, hopefully a little bit. So thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, progress daily and keep killing it.